Comedies are a difficult genre to pin down. I mean, if you ask somebody what their favourite comedy film is, the answers will likely vary a lot, and then it becomes a conversation of what actually counts. Because Jurassic Park is funny and makes me laugh, but is it necessarily a comedy? No, because it seems now more than ever that comedy is a subgenre. It's a genre you attach to other genres like action comedy, horror comedy, romantic comedy. It's rare that you get a film that isn't just simply trying to be a comedy. Especially on the mainstream level, the last time we had that on such a huge scale that was that successful was probably The Hangover. This year the closest to that we've had is Joyride and Bottoms, the latter of that I've yet to see but the point is that they're not big movies, general audiences aren't flocking to the cinemas to see either of these. Because people don't expect to go to the cinema and see a comedy anymore. When they want to see something comedic, they also want to see something else. Maybe this has something to do with the MCU, maybe it doesn't, but my point is that it's just a difficult genre to quantify, because genres were once used to categorise films in an easy manner. You know, say back in the 50s, everything was very clear cut near enough. This film is supposed to make you laugh. This film is supposed to be action packed. This film is supposed to be suspenseful. This film is supposed to scare you and that made it easy to categorize films. But as time has gone on, films have evolved and filmmakers and writers have become more nuanced and experimental when it comes to genres. So blending genre types has become so common and played with that now it's hard to even describe the feeling of a movie anymore. Comedy and horror being the most affected by this, but say something like Polite Society. It's a martial arts movie that's also operating as a comedy, with some science fiction aspects, as well as dipping its toes in horror every now and then, with some family themes and some romantic and suspenseful thriller vibes as well. It has so much going on for just a small indie film. Barbie is the biggest movie of the year so far, and even that tackles multiple feelings and genres. So comparing films even within genres has become increasingly more difficult when you consider what else is also in the mixture. This is then complicated by the idea of award shows, which if anybody has been around for a while and seen my video on the Oscars or saw my movies at art video, I despise all award shows. And this is partially a reason why, because yes the idea of best picture is a bit silly when you consider that all films are trying to achieve wildly different things depending on the type of movie. So a film like Barbarian and the Fablemans should never be going for the same award, but as per the rules they should since they're both the peak of their genres of the same year and yet only one of those will be considered. But that's a whole conversation on horror being disrespected that I'm not really going to do right now. But my point is a comedy, a horror, a biographical drama, a romance film are all trying to tap into different emotions from the audience and are implementing different filmmaking techniques to achieve these goals. But then even if we get say a horror category, which a lot of people have said, you know, in response to my Oscar rants that yes, we should have a separate horror category, even if we got that or a comedy category or a category for every genre. How can you even compare those? Because this year so far we've had say Talk To Me, The Blackening and Haunted Mansion. One is an indie possession horror trying to make comment on Gen Z or specifically general teenage culture whilst giving out some decent scares, fun visuals and great little world building. The second is a comedy slasher making an attempt at commentating on the black audience's relationship with horror films and how the black community has always had a strained and bizarre past with the genre. It's not trying to be very scary but definitely uses the genre's tropes and cliches as a way to nuance the comedy. And finally the third is a children's horror remake that uses the concept of ghosts and ghouls to bring some light hearted spooky entertainment for the whole family to enjoy. Now how do you even compare those three and say which is the best horror film out of all of them when they're all reaching for different points of the horror spectrum? This is also the case for every genre, most especially comedy. Look up a list of the top 10 best comedy films of all time. Now of course that list is only as valid as your opinion and my opinion, but in general you'll see Airplane on every single one of those lists, usually in the top three. 
Which, in my opinion, is very fair, but if you've ever seen Airplane, it's an unrelenting time of one-liners and bits. It's going for the funnies with every minute and never lets up for anything else. It cares little for plot, cinematography, character development and all, which is okay. That's what the film is going for and is very successful at it. Therefore, it's one of the best comedies of all time. It perfectly achieves what it's going for, which at the same time is a very difficult goal to achieve. Not just any movie can be the this consistently funny every single joke every single minute but then say something like crazy stupid love which will rarely ever be on one of these lists because it isn't a joke a minute in fact the comedy this film goes for almost feels like it's taken a backseat to the story because it isn't entirely a comedy it's a romantic comedy but i'd like to point your attention to one scene in particular the garden scene. Now this to me is one of the greatest scenes of all time, not just in comedy, but in general. The way this scene perfectly pays off every single theme and thread and line that it's been setting up since the very opening moments is impressive. The movie spends its time building a spider web of plot lines and character developments and scenarios and though each of them are weaved together expertly as to not feel complicated, the movie unbeknownst to the audience is taking them to a destination they simply aren't prepared for where the writing gets to drop all the dominoes at once. It's like playing Jenga without knowing the rules, but your opponent does. You're just there watching them make this structure block by block more and more unstable, but you're not sure why. And then in one swift motion topples the entire thing and it clicks to you that that was the aim the whole time. And this scene isn't overly reliant on just simply the payoff to work. It's also relying on its stars to sell every single emotion being felt through perfect delivery and understanding of the situation. And those emotions vary highly and are felt passionately and all the performances are just so nuanced and perfect, especially Karel and Gosling who give probably their most underrated performances ever here. So then how do you even begin to compare this movie to Airplane which are both operating on completely different concepts and goals and both achieving them to their fullest potential? On a pure laugh per minute metric, Airplane wins by a sizable margin but on a narrative writing level and more detailed basis, Crazy Stupid Love wipes the floor. And this is why genres are becoming more and more arbitrary. Plus, styles of films die out and with them, genres, leaving some films without a real identity. Because some people love to say that the western died when it didn't. Django Unchained, The Hateful Eight, Hello High Water, Bone Tomahawk, The Power of the Dog, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, Cry Macho, No Country for Old Men, and even to some extent films like Holes can all come under that umbrella, but because they don't all prescribe to that old spaghetti western type of filmmaking and aesthetic, they get labelled among other genres. Well, that actually isn't even all that true because they do get labelled westerns depending on who you ask or where you're looking. So genres only really exist when we choose to acknowledge them and they evolve when our perception of them does. Like I hate the whole separation of thriller and horror. Like when people say something like Seven is more of a thriller than a horror, I hate it because respectfully, that's silly. It's only because people have been fed the idea over the years that horror is supposed to be scary, it's the scary genre, therefore if you aren't terrified or if it isn't attempted to scare you, then it isn't explicitly a horror film which just doesn't make sense. You know, if Seven had came out in the 60s, it was black and white but exactly the same, people would have called it a horror film. And it's stuff like this which has led audiences to consider films like Psycho more of a thriller now than a horror film, despite it being one of the greatest horror films of all time. This has also led to a more recent problem I've noticed with comedy horror, where people will deduct a horror comedy's point if it makes them laugh more than it makes them scared, which is outrageous. Somebody told me recently they thought Megan was bad because it was more funny than scary and it just completely baffled me. 
Because that's the point. The stupid TikTok dance isn't supposed to be scary. It's supposed to be funny, you fucking idiot. You're meant to laugh, you dummy. Evil Dead 2 is one of the best horror films ever made and its entire DNA is based on making you laugh at the sheer absurdity and the stigma of the horror genre label has created these ideas in people's heads. Genres to people are a way to clearly define a product when in actuality they're best served as just a hint to an aspect the film is trying to find the vibe of. So if you label something an action comedy but the jokes aren't as incredible as an all out comedy, it gets points deducted regardless of whether that was its intention. The film could simply just be going for some situational comedy bits to break up the action but now it's suddenly being compared to a film like Superbad and it has no chance of being awarded anything. Go onto any streaming service and click on any genre and you won't have to scroll long till you find a discrepancy. Find a film that you personally feel doesn't belong. Because there isn't any consistency of those categories. This is a screenshot of the comedy section on Disney Plus and it is insane that films like The Banshees of Inishirin are being so closely related to Bedazzled, Bend It Like Beckham, Bedtime Stories, Bad Company and Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Now, as always, I don't know the resolution to this problem. I'm not entirely sure how to define movies and categorize them better. This may be the best possible way, but that doesn't make it any less stupid still. And at the end of the day, I'm a hypocrite because I always say I love horror and that horror is the greatest genre and I even did a video on that idea. But I suppose that's because to me, horror is a great umbrella term for all it contains and through the wide variety of possibilities it provides, I seem to love it all and when those films are put together, it never seems distractingly out of place. Which I can't say for every other genre that seems to be a blanket term like drama or science fiction. Like The Conjuring, Army of Darkness, The Fly, Psycho, Frankenstein, Scream and Bodies 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 may not all be attempting similar goals or have a similar aesthetic but they all do feel akin to one another like they're cousins of the same family. But maybe I'm just coping a little bit here but you know that's just me. What do you think? I'm sorry this has been more of a rant than an actual constructed video, but sometimes it just goes like that. So let me know what you think of the whole topic and whether it's a film from your favorite arbitrarily labeled genre or not. As always, keep watching movies.